Hey guys and welcome to another MDO Compositions tutorial. Um, this is the third tutorial in the first steps and preparation series. And this time we're going to take a look at the properties panel, which is to your right in the viewport. But first of all, let's talk about a few things I forgot to mention last time. And also one thing I didn't know last time. Okay, so the first thing, um, and I skipped this one, is this button over here. And this is actually good to save um, um, a certain layer configuration. So let's say you have like three cubes. And now let's just move this one to the second layer and this one to the third layer. Okay. Now you have one cube on each layer. And now let's say your standard um, layer configuration, so to say, would be one, two, and three, because you got um, uh, objects on those three layers. Then you can just click this button here. And now if, for example, you go to this layer and you change something over here, and then you'd like to return to your standard um, layer configuration, just press this button. And you can see those three layers are um, once again active. So, yeah, this is quite a cool thing to do. However, I'm not quite sure, let me just check. You have to always reset it. Um, so I'm still not quite sure how handy that can be because if right now you're here again you have to reset it oh, my fault you can see it's pretty it's pretty tricky to use this one but if you have a large scene it could make sense i guess okay then the second thing is something actually quite embarrassing i should have known that if we go to our first um layer and let's just go into um, uh, orthogra orthographic view first and now let's go to front view and now let's just rotate our cube a little bit okay so now if we, if you change global to local you can see um, the uh, 3d manipulator uh, widget um, changes accordingly and now you can do transformations like for example this and i told you in the last tutorial that you cannot um, move it around those new axes with shortcuts, okay? Because those are still the global ones. However, if you press uh, G, for example, and then said, and then once again said, you can see it now does pretty much what we want it to do. So sorry about that one. Um, I hope that cleared it up. Whenever you have anything selected besides global, just um, hit the uh, said X or Y axis button twice. Uh, same goes, by the way, for um, G. Shift, set, shift, set again, and now you are also in the um, um, in the um, uh, local um, plane, so to say. And make sure to um, let go of shift afterwards, because otherwise, if you um, keep shift shift pressed, you can see you have like a um, ultra. Um, accurate positioning okay you can position things very accurately however um, you need to move mo your mouse much more to achieve the same um, transformation okay cool now let's just um, clear this up with alt and r and g and now it's back in its default position now an another thing i'd like to show you or I'd like to add to the last tutorial, basically, <coughs> is this um, it's how you rotate around uh, a 3D cursor. Now, I thought I showed you that already, but I then, or I, I plan to show you in the last tutorial, but then I, I missed it. So, you will see in this tutorial that there is, is even a better way to position your camera. However, for now, one handy trick is to just go into camera view. And now you just um, reposition your cursor. Uh, let's go to camera view once again with numpad zero. And now in order to rotate exactly around this center point, what you do, actually you might um, have found out about this already on your own, just change the, the pivot point to a 3D cursor. And now if you ro click R and set, 
um, I first have to um, select the camera, of course. R and Z. Now you can rotate around your um, your object. And if this object would be, for example, over here, just hit um, Shift S, cursor to select it, and now you can easily um, once again hit R and Z and rotate. Ah, I have to select the camera first. R and Z and rotate around your cube. A very handy option here. Um, yeah, and the last thing I wanted to show you, actually two other things, also about layers that I forgot to mention. Let's go back to um, orthographic view. And now we got those, we've got a couple layers here, three in total that are um, used. And in order to switch between them, you can use um, your numbers on your keyboard, not on your numpad, on your keyboard, from one to th zero. One is layer one, two is layer two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Another cool thing is that you can actually um, have one object on several layers. So if you remember to position an object on a layer, just select it, hit the M button on your keyboard, and now you can move it to whatever layer you want. Now, if you hit Shift, you can actually select multiple layers. For example, one, two, and three. And now, if you if you look at this, you can see we got, we got three orange points because this object, which is the last one that was selected, is now on three different layers. And that is actually pretty cool. Now you can see we got it here, we've got it here, and we've got it over here. Is there another thing? Let me just see. Oh yeah, um, because you only have ten keys on the top of your keyboard, you can only toggle or you can only select layer 1 to 10. If you want to select those other 10, you have to hit Alt 1, Alt 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Let's get into the Properties panel. Let's go to layer 1, and let's delete this cube, and let's also delete the cube on layer 3. Let's go back to layer 1. And if we select an object, you can see that this uh, Properties panel is, as well as all the other panels, are context sensitive, which means if I um, select a cube, something else will be shown than if I select the camera or the lamp or whatever. Um, and now that I have this cube selected, I can see, first of all, location. And as I said before, um, this describes the location of the origin relative to the um, point, the center point of your scene, zero, zero, zero. So if I put that back to zero, you can see the origin is once again in the center. Now you can also lock one of those, for example, lock the uh, Z axis. And now you can only move it inside this plane from, uh, in this XY plane. Okay. Same for the rotation. And here you can actually uh, change the kind of rotation. Now this is a little bit um, advanced. You use quat quaternation sometimes for animating things because this has this um, gimbal lock cannot occur with quaternation. Um, it's hard to explain what that is. I don't even know really myself, but I know that it is quite crucial sometimes. Anyway, not so important right now. Same for scaling. And then we, we have that very weird thing here, is, which is called dimensions. And let me just show you a few things with, with those two um, different options. If you increase the scale amount in one of those uh, on one of those values, you can see it actually changes um, its size. And if you change the value of dimension, it does the exact same thing. Put in a four, hit enter, and then you can see it automatically changed the two. Or if you change this to four, it automatic it automatically um, changed this to eight. Now you might ask yourself, why is this um, necessary? Now, one handy thing I discovered is that, for example, if you have everything th like this, and now you just scale it up a little bit, let's say in the uh, y-axis, both changed. However, sometimes it is a bad thing if your scale value is anything else than 1. So right now we can go to um, Control a and apply the scale. And you can see the scale went back to 1, but the dimension still stays at 7.498. And this is pretty handy because you still know exactly how much you scaled it, okay? 
So that's what this is all about. If we put that back to two, you can see the scale goes down as well. Now you can um, reapply the scale and we are back to, oh, my fault here. Control A, scale, perfect. Now, grease pencil, we already um, took a shot at that. Um, now here you've got a few more options. So here you can, first of all, create a new um, grease pencil data block and a new layer. So now you have a layer and on this layer you can actually draw, th draw stuff into your scene. So you can, for example, as before, draw a circle. Let's go with the circle. Now you can see um, it is drawn onto a plane that goes through the uh, 3D cursor. But maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want to use one of those other options you have here. For example, um, stick stroke to the view. So this is pretty cool. Now you can draw something, for example, like, you know, one of those... Um, let me just see what the shortcut was. D left mouse. One of those camera things. For example, who knows? And now if you move your mouse around, uh, you're, if you rotate around your scene or if you move your scene, because this is stuck to the view, it will always stay at the same point, uh, at the same place. Now, next thing, surface. This is also pretty cool. With this function, you can actually draw onto um, a surface, for example, onto this cube. Now, you cannot see it from this perspective, but as soon as you change it, you can see it actually sticks to the surface of the cube. Now, it isn't very accurate, as you can see. Sometimes it um, slightly... Um, um, goes into this uh, into this cube, but that is not such a big deal. And finally, we have the stroke. And what this does, it actually sticks to the stroke. So if you draw something like this now, you can see it behaves a little bit weird. However, whenever um, your stroke um, intersects, so to say, with the stroke that's already there, it will. Make sure it meets in the same point, and then from there on, you'll just do go haywire and do weird things. Okay, then the uh, X-ray function is also pretty self-explaining. If you um, uncheck that, you can no longer see things that are behind an object. And if you um, check that again, you can see everything. Then thickness of strokes, you can actually increase this, the thickness also quite um, obvious and this is the opacity so you can make it to 0.3 or up to, to 1 actually so it has full opacity and you can also um, change the color if you want it to be like red or something whatever I don't really know what ghost frames are um, yeah, anyway, if you need this often, those grease pencil, this grease pencil stuff, um, I recommend you read some of the documentation or you search for some other tutorials because most of the people never use it or nearly never use it. So let's just um, close this. And now you can see everything disappeared. And now if you also close this, um, this data block, everything's gone. And if you create a new layer, it automatically creates a new data block. The cool thing about all this is that you can always convert your grease pencil strokes into a new object. So let's just um, draw something onto, let's say, hmm, let's go to surface and let's draw something onto this cube, like this. Now let's go to convert and let's convert it to a bezier curve, okay? And you can see we've got a Bezier curve now. Now a Bezier curve is something we didn't cover yet, so um, just don't bother with it just now. But just so in case you've you've heard this at least once, it is quite handy if you can just create objects from pencil strokes. So let's delete this once again, and let's move on to the next thing. Uh, let me just see where you were here. Grease pencil, okay. Then we come to the view. Now, under view, we've got a few pretty cool options. Let's just delete this pencil stroke and the data block. You've got a few pretty cool options. Um, first thing is the vocal length of, of your 3D view. And this is not the same thing as 
what I showed you before here under the uh, camera settings okay vocal length uh, let me just show you if I go to um, let's say 90 and if I go to a perspective and now if I change it back to 35 you can see it changes like the focal length of your camera now the problem is if those values are not the same okay then if you um, choose your your angle to render it and now let's change that to let's say 90 again let's say you want to render it like this and now you go to control alt 0 to position your camera you can see it's no longer as accurate as it was before with the distance because you got a different uh, focal length so keep that in mind when positioning your camera it is handy if you have the same um, focal length in your scene and for your camera now lock to object with this method you can actually lock your uh, 3d view to one of the objects for example choose your lamp and now this the lamp will always be centered this can be useful for very specific cases because now you can no longer with in any way um, change the center of your view okay but it i'm sure it's handy if you just want to work on just this particular object or for some other from for some other thing it's just important that you know that it is actually possible so let's just delete this one um okay now let's just use the home button to get over here okay now let's just with once again press numpad 5 to go into our the ortho orthographic view now lock to cursor now your scene is locked or your 3d view is locked to the cursor and the cursor 3d cursor will always be in the center of your view so if you reposition it you can see your view moves accordingly and now if it for example shift c you're once again in the center um, also pretty cool uh, it's not something you use often but i'm sure there is a uh, there could be an occasion here and there where you could use it Next thing, lock camera to view. And this is pretty cool. Now, if you check it, nothing happens, okay? You can still navigate around your viewport as always. However, if you go to um, camera view with numpad 0, and now you move around, you can see your camera moves exactly as if... Um, as if... It, it weren't it, it, it wouldn't blah, as if it weren't there. And that's pretty cool, because now you can position it very accurately and very interactive. And I just love it. Um, if you uncheck that, you no longer you can no longer do that. Okay. So then, and this over here, this is the clipping distance. Okay. So right now, I can see everything that is um, one thousand Blender units away from the view, so to say. Okay. So if you change that to let's say zero, zero. Oh, my num lock is not activated. Once again, zero, you can see nothing. Because now, actually, you only see what is one Blender unit in front of your view. Okay, let's put this back to, let's say, 10. And you can see it actually starts to show you a few things. Um, let's go back to, let's say, 100. Oh, um, 100. And now you can see um, everything. You have um, similar settings in the... Um, camera um, panel over here um, clipping start and end but this just affects what is rendered and what is not rendered or what you can see in camera view and what you cannot see in camera view okay then the next thing is local camera with this option you could theoretically um, make it so that you can have different cameras in your scene um, however I did not figure out how you can do that I will try to do so um, but I didn't find any info on this just now, so yeah, let's skip that for now. I've never used it before and I never missed it. Now the 3D cursor. Um, here you can actually see the location of your 3D cursor. You can also change it. Okay. Now I already ta I already taught you how to um, reposition your 3D cursor very accurately with Shift S and cursor selected. But if you if you need like if you need very accurate um, known known positions, you can just enter them here in the properties panel under 3D cursor. Now item, this is I think we used that before to rename uh, one of the cubes. In here, you just see what item is selected and what it's called, and you can also change the name of your item. 
Now if you go in, in the um, properties panel over here under object data, is that what I call object data? Object. Um, you can see camera, and this is the name. And if you change it over here, camera one, you can see it also changes it over here. Um, but this is a very fast way to rename your object. Now, under display, you have also a couple of settings. If you check only, or just in general, this um, section here um, defines what is shown to your in your view and what isn't. If you go to only render, then only the things that will actually be rendered um, are showing up. And since the lamp and the camera are not actually rendered, they just do something to improve the render or to actually enable it, they won't be shown. So only the cube is shown. Now, outline selected is pretty um, self-explaining. If you uncheck it, you don't have an outline on your object. If you check it, you once again have this uh, yeah, orange outline. Then all object origins just um, shows all the object origins, whether they are um, selected or not, because usually only the ones that are selected are shown. Then relationship lines, okay, this is something um, we didn't cover yet. If you parent an object to another, let's just do this real quick, actually. Let's duplicate this cube. Let's move it upwards. Now you can select this cube and shift select the other cube. Now if you hit Control P. What will happen? Your all your previous selections, for example, this cube and ones and other cubes that you might have selected beforehand, will be parented to this cube that was selected last. And this cube is now the parent of all the others. So if you now move this cube, you see everything else moves along. Now you can also say I want this lamp to be parented to this cube. Control P. And now this lamp moves with it. And those things are relationship lines. By the way, this is um, the parents, and those are the children, and those two are uh, siblings to each other, quite um, easily to um, memorize. And if you toggle that off, you can see no longer the relationship lines. Okay. Now, all edges. This is uh, a bit annoying to explain once again because we didn't yet cover the um, edit mode. But let's just... Um, by the way, with Alt P, Alt P, you can um, clear parent, so now it's, it's no longer uh, related to each other. Now, if we go into edit mode with Tab, I showed you that before. You can see um, this is the um, the edit mode where you can actually move around the vertices. And now what you can do, you can add vertices in here. And I'm not going to show you how you do that because we will cover that in a future tutorial. But let me just do something here like this. Now you can see it's got the same geometry basically, but it's got three more vertices um, along each edge. So if now we tap out of edit mode, it looks the exact same because um, the geometry didn't really change, it just added vertices that don't do anything. So now if I go to wireframe mode with um, set on your keyboard, you can see it still looks the exact same, although it should display the wireframe mode. And that is because usually only edges that actually change something about the geometry or that are, that are necessary to change the to, ch to, to change the geometry are displayed. But if you don't want that, if you want everything to be displayed, just hit all edges. And now you can see what happened there. Okay. Now let's just go back into edit mode. Let's just select those and delete them. Okay. Perfect. Now, the grid floor is actually this grid that you can see in the middle of your scene. You can activate or deactivate this, and you can also activate or deactivate the different axes. And with um, those options down here, you can actually change the appearance of your grid floor. So you can increase the lines, and keep in mind that only every second step um, it will actually change the amount, because it needs to change one box into each direction and therefore um, in on this axis for example two boxes have to be added simultaneously and therefore only every second step is actually um, considered oh wrong one nice this is not enough okay now same goes for scaling here you can just scale the grid floor and with subdivisions, if you are in 
for example, in top view, you can see you've got a few subdivisions in each um, box, in each square, and you can increase those with this option. Usually 10 is just fine. And with those shading options, you can actually um, also change the way those are shaded. Remember, smooth and flat, those were your first shading options. And this is um, another way to shade your object in um, in your 3D viewport. Multi-texture is usually just fine. However, if you go to GLS cell, you can see nothing happens at all. Now let's go to textured. Nothing happens at all. Uh, I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, well, anyway, with uh, GLSL you can use a bit uh, a bit more advanced uh, texturing methods and materials. For example, uh, matte cap materials, and they are very useful for, for example, sculpting, because they um, display the the object differently dependent on the normals, dependent on how you look onto the um, object. Uh, we're going to talk more about normals in the next tutorial, I hope, which is about the edit mode. Okay, let's go back to multi-textured here, and then textured solid. That just means that just means that um, if you have an object, for example, this cube, and you have a texture um, wrapped onto it with UV unwrapping, also mapped onto it with UV unwrapping, you can actually make it show. Uh, you can make it so that it shows in with a uh, textured. However, if you um, check this texture solid, even in solid mode. It will actually texture um, your object. And toggle quad view, we already know that one um, from over here. Control Alt, Alt Q. Now, motion tracking, this is, um, I think you might have heard about this one. Um, just recently in Blender 2.6, Blender um, the motion tracker was introduced. Now you can actually um, film real, f real, real footage. You can just go um, away from your, your computer for, for once, um, record some footage, I don't know, in your garden or something. And then you can just, you can track it and you can actually add objects with shadows and everything. However, that is fairly advanced, so for now let's just ignore this one. Let's just um, remember that it is in the properties panel. And then background images. What you can do here, you can load in background images. Let's just open one. Um, let's see. For example, this one. And now you can see I've got loaded, I loaded a few blueprints. And now I can just um, arrange my mesh or change my mesh so it actually fits the car and then I this way I can actually model a car pretty accurately because without any reference it is quite hard and usually the result is not that um, pleasing and you can add however many images you wish you can also add movie clips uh, and so on but should we ever use this and I think we will um, I will cover this a bit more in depth then now transform orientations. Uh, <laughs> what you can actually do here, I think, are creating, you can create your own transform orientations. For example, let's just go to one, let's rotate this like this, and let's go to local. And now in local you can see that it is no longer as the global axis. Um, go to create, add cube.001, and now you can see you've got an extra orientation over here. So now you can, for example, take this one, and you can see you have cube 001. And this way you can just um, move other objects according to the local coordinates of a different object, if you know what I mean. Also quite a handy tool. Um, I, one of those things you don't use too often, but uh, whenever you need them, it is very good to know where to find them, because they can save you a lot of time and a lot of trouble. So let's just delete this one, and now it is gone. So, uh, perfect. This was... It took half an hour after all, but still much faster than the last one. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any feedback, comments, or questions, or whatever, post it in the comments section below each video. 
Um, yeah, um, thank you for watching and see you next time.